Come on, let's praise the Lord in here. I said, come on, let's praise the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord for the praise team. Amen. We, we thank the Lord for Deacon Harrison. Amen. Praise the Lord. And all of you that are here. I looked and uh, I seen Brother uh, Gibby here on today. We're thankful for seeing Brother Gibb. We thank the Lord for our Brother Patrick being here on today also. Amen. We're thanking the Lord for all of his many wonderful blessings. Amen. We want to continue to pray for those that are sick. Amen, that the Lord will touch their bodies and raise them up. We thank the Lord for the testimonies of healing in this house. Amen, the Lord is a healer. Amen, he heals all the time. Amen, we have a few announcements here that we want to get out of the way. There is a community choir rehearsal for the NESR Community Church Service on next Sunday. Uh, choir members are needed from every congregation. Rehearsals will be held on the following dates. And it gives the dates of June 18th, the 26th, and the 29th. Amen. So those who are going to be singing. And uh, by the way, that service, I believe, is going to start at 10 o'clock. And... Um, Yes, we've decided to go ahead and to uh, be a part of it. Uh, next week, we will have a representative here 
uh, for our, uh, one of the big questions that I had was about our offerings because as it has been stated, it takes, amen, these lights and this air conditioner, amen, it takes money. And sitting back in my office, I had to go out to the air conditioning thermostat and turn it up a little bit. It was so cold. But it takes money. So we'll have a representative here uh, from 9.30 to 10 o'clock to receive your offerings right here. You can bring them here. And then you can head on over to uh, the center. Is that all right? Amen. So we will have a representative here from 9.30 to 10 to receive your tithing and your offering because we don't want you to, amen, not be blessed of the Lord. Amen. And we want to continue to be able to have lights and to have heat and to be comfortable. So look at somebody now and say to the neighbor next Sunday, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, tithing and offering will be taken here. Amen. And uh, if anyone who's out via Facebook or YouTube, amen, we uh, encourage you, amen, however you send it in, give Lafay or uh, hashtag Living Faith Temple or whether you mail it in to our post office box. Amen. It will be the same for you, and God bless you. Can everyone say amen? amen? New Jerusalem Christian Center, amen, are inviting us in our youth department for a youth service at New Jerusalem on Saturday, July 15th at 5 p.m. Saturday, July 16th at 5 p.m. It will be in Arnton, Ohio. And the theme is 1 Peter 2 and 9, a chosen generation. On July 15th, that is a few days prior to our holy convocation in the city of Detroit, Amen. We will be having a service to honor Bishop Shouse. Amen. It will be held in Columbus, Ohio on Champion Avenue. How many of you remember where Bishop Shouse's church used to be? Over there on Champion. That's where the service is going to be held. It will be once again on July 15th. That is a Friday night service. It is a service in appreciation for Bishop Shouts. Amen. So those of you who are wanting to go, you have a couple of weeks uh, in advance. Notice. Amen. Uh, if you want to go, we'll take the van. Amen. But by next week or the weeks afterwards, we'd like to have a head count of how many would like to go. Some may need help getting there. Amen. We don't mind helping you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We've almost helped out. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. You can help. Amen. You can't, you can't beat God's giving. And you can't beat God's helping. Amen. I believe that the church is a help business. Amen. I know the sister Bendoff and I, we are in the help business. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for those of you who are wanting to go. Just um, let us to know. Amen. And we'll do our best to try to help you to get there. That's July the 15th a.m. in Columbus, Ohio on Champion Avenue. Amen. We love the Lord today. We thank him for what he has done and for what he is going to do. Amen. We have some storms are, which are supposed to come a little later here. Amen. But we thank God. Somebody said, I told the storm. Amen. To pass. Amen. A lot of storms we have in our life. 
Amen. And we have to talk to our storms. Amen. You can talk to the storm and tell the storm to pass. Amen. So we're, we're grateful for today. Let us remember on next Sunday, let us govern ourselves according to the announcements. And let's keep on pressing on for the Lord. Can you say amen? Let us go to the word of the Lord. St. John chapter number 21, verses 1 through 11. St. John chapter number 21, verses 1 through 11. Feel no waste time. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe. He brought me this far to leave me, said I, I don't feel no waste time, I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. St. John chapter number 21. St. John chapter number 21 verses 1 through 11. So much is going on in our world. We must get a hold of Jesus. Hold on to him and don't let go. I said we need to get a hold of him and not let go. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of T Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. In other words, this is how he showed himself. There were together Simon, Peter, Thomas called Didymus, or one of the twins, and Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples, that seven of the twelve, with the exception of Judas. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Amen. They caught nothing. Brother James must have been with them back there in the back. <laughs> Amen. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits 
dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish lay thereon and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for thank you for your word for this people, for life, for health and our strength. We re ask that you will remember those that are sick, sick today and sick in their bodies. We pray that you would touch them and not only those that are physically sick, but those that are struggling, struggling spiritually and mentally, Lord. We pray that you would touch their bodies. Those that are weak in the faith, some are struggling in the faith this morning. We pray that you would touch them and strengthen them. Gird up the loins of their minds. Cause them to run back to this altar, Lord, with the hands lifted up, calling on your name. Lord God, bless us in this house on today. Save somebody. Bless somebody. Encourage and deliver somebody. Oh God, we know that you're able. We depend upon you. We trust you today. These and many other blessings we'll ask, and we'll ask them all in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. As you take your seat, turn and look to a neighbor and say to them, neighbor, mended nets. Look at another neighbor and say to that neighbor, neighbor, mended nets. Put your hands together. Give God praise for mended nets. Mended nets. I'm grateful this morning, amen, for the many, many blessings of the Lord. We thank the Lord for those who, amen, were not feeling well and are feeling better. Amen. We thank the Lord for you. No one wants to be ill at no time. We thank the Lord for Sister Bendolph being here on this morning also. And her struggle and patience in keeping uh, her mother. We thank the Lord for her being here. Um, we give God honor, amen, for just health, amen. Many people are sick today amen and we're grateful first thing we do is we thank the lord for our health and our strength we thank the lord for the word of the lord amen where would we be this morning without the word of the lord amen we thank the lord for god being on our side knowing who he is when our politicians and we're not going to be political but it seems like our politicians are just turned upside down amen the world seems to be amen our government seems to be in chaos amen but we thank God for knowing who he is everybody don't know who Jesus is amen but you ought to thank God that you know who he is this afternoon amen we ought to thank god for just and appreciate him somebody said when i think of the goodness of jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah, hallelujah. and i thank god for saving me yeah. he's still in the saving business on today Amen. We ought to thank God for the opportunity to be able to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. And be a partaker uh, and sit in heavenly places. 
and praise God one with another. When we look in our text, a, when we look in the scripture, we find our text is irrelevant with a, another passage of scripture which is found in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Once again, we must understand when we read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they write of similar things. They're called synoptic Gospels. But in our text today, which is taken out of the Gospel of John, John tries to get his readers to realize that Jesus is God-man. He is trying to get his readers to understand that Jesus is both human, Mary and Joseph, But his starting out was in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. When you read John, you have to understand he is portraying the divinity of Jesus Christ. When we read John, you must also understand When we look in the Gospel of Luke, we find in the fifth chapter and verse number six, it reads this, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net. Go back and look at Luke 5, Jesus is beginning his public ministry, and this is the onset where Peter, Andrew, James, and John will begin to follow Jesus. It is there in verse number 11 of the fifth chapter, and it says, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. In other words, they left everything and then began to follow Jesus. They followed him, amen, because they had heard his teaching. Andrew, the brother of Peter, had heard Jesus teach and he had seen where Jesus was baptized of John the Baptist, and he went to his brother Peter. When Peter heard Jesus, and then after this particular miracle, Peter then becomes a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. It didn't take a whole lot other than a message and a miracle to persuade Peter to forsake everything and to begin to follow after Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, they call uh, the name of the sea, which is the Sea of Galilee, they call the name of the sea the Sea of Tiberias. There is a reason why they call it the Sea of Tiberias, not only in Luke, but in the Gospel of St. John. John, once again, is trying to tell you that Jesus is God. There is no difference between he and God. They are one. 
The scripture says that there are three that bear record in heaven. It is the spirit, the word, and the son. These three are one. And so my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, John is letting us to know the uniqueness the sovereignty and the creative and the divinity of who Jesus is. In John, it means something when John tells us, and after these things, in verse number one, Jesus showed himself again. Jesus has died on the cross. He has resurrected from the grave. And this is the third time that Jesus is going to appear before his disciples. It is important when we look that John says that he showed himself to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He does not use the Sea of Galilee at this particular time, but Tiberias because things have changed between the time that Jesus was crucified until now that he has been resurrected. He uses Tiberias because Tiberias is a Gentile term for Galilee. And what Jesus was doing prior to his resurrection, he is now getting ready to do differently after his resurrection. Can somebody say amen? In the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, and we're going to go there, uh, verses number 5 and 6. We had talked to you a few weeks ago about the job of the disciples uh, prior to the death of Christ and after the death of Christ. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commended them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was the job and that was the duty of the disciples at that particular time. We talked to you a few weeks ago that they were not to go and talk to the Gentiles, for the Gentiles were not at this time ordained to be grafted in. Uh, but after Christ's death and resurrection, amen, there was going to be a new charge. Go into Jerusalem and wait till you be endued with power from on high. Then you go to the Samaritans and to where the utmost parts of the world. At one particular time, they were destined just for the lost sheep of Israel. But the time would come when they would not only deal with the lost sheep of Israel, but the door was going to be open to the Samaritans and the Gentiles also. I'm thankful that you and I had been grafted in and that you and I have this opportunity to be able to call on the name of the Lord. I'm glad for the dispensation of grace. Amen. This is a time when God's grace is upon all flesh. For whosoever will, let them call on the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. This is the time of grace when we can call on him, amen, and get an opportunity to have fellowship with him. Well, my brothers and sisters, that time prior, amen, to the resurrection, they had one job. Now they got a, another job, and that is to go throughout 
the world and teach and preach to everybody. Now you have to understand in our text we find that Jesus is letting the people know or John is letting the church to know and the writers and the readers to know that he met them at Tiberias. In other words, Jesus has resurrected and everybody now is getting ready to be included. When John begins to write in this particular text, he talks about who was there. Simon was there, Peter, Simon Peter and Thomas and Andrew and Nathaniel and the sons of thunder and two other disciples that are not named. The Bible lets us to know that Peter and these other six men return to what they were doing prior, amen, to knowing Jesus. They were fishermen, amen. Peter, James, John, and Andrew had flourishing businesses as fishermen. When they knew who Jesus was and began to hear him, they left everything and followed him. They're in a boat, the Bible says. Now, the boat could represent a church in a struggling state because it says they were out all night long and they caught nothing. Uh, that is a struggling state. That is a sad situation for a fisherman to be out all night long and to catch nothing. So the boat is representative of a struggling church. The net represents the gospel on this particular scripture. And the net means that something has not been done right. What kind of net are they using that is causing so much struggle? Are there holes in the net that are too big to catch some of the fish that may be swimming through? Is it a compromising net, praise the Lord, that seems to permit and allow any and everything to take place in the church? We have to understand that we're living in a Laodicean church. And it is a church where everybody thinks because they have different things, houses and cars and money and bank accounts and so forth, that they have no need for Christ. Amen. But the Bible lets us to know that we need to return to our first love. We need to repent, amen, and return to our first love. Brothers and sisters, just because we have a beautiful home or because you have a fat bank account does not mean you can take it easy or let up on serving the Lord. There are many places, amen, that tell you that you really are not blessed unless you have material things. Uh, they say, amen, that, that blessings is predicated upon what you have. But the devil is a liar. Amen. Your, what you have uh, is not predicated upon being blessed. I can be blessed with holes in my shoes. I can be blessed having one suit to wear to church all year long. I can be blessed and not get my nails done this week or my toes. It has nothing to do with what you have. But when you know you bless is when you can smile and pray for those that despitefully use you. Amen. When you can love them that hate you. When you can wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Everything doesn't have to be going well in your life for you to be blessed.
But we're living in a day and time when Jesus said there would and there are false prophets in the land. And so what was the net that they were using where they were out all night long struggling church and were not catching anything? Well, my brothers and sisters, we also have to wonder, amen, now that Jesus has died and Jesus has resurrected and Jesus has appeared on a couple of other occasions to his disciples and appears this time, but when he appears this time, they do not recognize him. Amen. They hear his voice and they see him, but they're so busy doing, amen, what they have already left doing three years ago. Y'all not going to pray with me in here. It was three years prior, amen, that they were fishermen, but they have now left and followed Jesus and are walking with him. It had been three years ago, amen, after, amen, that they had left their occupation and followed Jesus. They're now back to square one. They decide we're going to go fishing, and because Jesus is not showing up the way he used to, he's not around anymore, we're going to pick up where we left off. It is a dangerous thing just because you don't feel the power of the Holy Ghost every day in your life that you can pick up and go back to where you started from. Every now and then, and I see it happening here with certain people, and I thank God, amen, sometimes he just gives an intuition of knowing what's going on in folks' life and we pray for them. But some folk, amen, are struggling this morning, amen, maybe because they hadn't felt nothing in a while. The devil is tugging at them and pulling at them and trying to get them to go back to their old beggarly habits. Amen. The scripture has said the sow is going to go back to the mire and the dog return to their vomit. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that no matter how bad that it might be getting in your life, do not leave the church. No matter how many struggles that you might be encountering, stay in the church. Don't stay away from the church because the more you stay away from the church, that old lying devil laughs at you and keeps pulling and this turns into that and that turns into this and so forth and so forth. That's why we got to keep on pressing our way and spike the tide. Amen. Folk are being turned aside in these last days. What in the world is going on in our country? Praise the Lord. The devil is busy. We told you a few months ago how hell is rising up. You know the devil is mad. He has but a short time to go. He recognizes the signs of the time. But it seems as if all the saints don't recognize the signs of the time. He did not give the signs of the time to the world, but he did give the signs of the time to the church. But we act as if though we don't have on our spiritual discerners to where we can see Jesus is soon to return. 
the disciples are discouraged. Amen. Many things have happened in the life of Peter. He has denied Christ. He has turned his back on him. All of them have run away from him that the scripture would be fulfilled in the garden of Gethsemane where the shepherd was smitten and the sheep did scatter. Only John stayed around with Mary and Martha, but the rest of them have fled from him. Can you imagine these real people, not just, amen, biblical figures that were a figment of someone's imagination, but these are real men, real women when we read the scripture. These men were real, amen, and they had let down the one that they knew had loved him. They longed for him like it used to be when they were with him every single day. But that has changed now and he's making appearances and the longing is growing greater and greater. After a length of time when he had not appeared to them, they begin to go back to doing what they had previously done and although we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh we still need to eat drink and to clothe ourselves and so they had to have some way of doing these things so going back cannot be looked at uh, all the way bad amen they had to do something they had to eat but can you imagine the longing that they had for jesus i don't know about you praise the lord but every now and then i get a longing for him amen every now and then i just want to meditate and think on his goodness uh, Amen. I once was young, but now I'm old, and it seems the older that I get, the more that I need of Jesus. Amen. He gets sweeter. It is true. Amen. I didn't understand it a long time ago, but I heard my mother sing all the time, sweeter as the days go by. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. The Bible lets us to know it's line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little, we follow on to know him. The more that we know him, the more we should appreciate him. The more that we know him, the more we ought to long for him. The disciples are longing for him. And without any real direction, they go back to doing what they had done. They had once left this behind to follow him. And there is no way that they should return. Turn. Look at somebody and say to the neighbor, they should not return. Uh, when God brings you out of something, don't go back to it. When God delivers you from something, don't go back to it. When God opens the door for you, walk through and don't look back. You don't have to worry about shutting the door. If Noah was here today, he would tell you, don't worry about shutting the door. Amen. God opens the door and God shuts the door. Noah didn't shut the door to the ark. You're not going to pray now. But the Lord shut the door. I'm just going to keep on walking by faith and trusting in him. Uh, and so you've got to understand when God brings you out, when God delivers you, don't go back. Stay out of it, no matter what it may be. If God delivered you from alcoholism, don't go back to Jim Beam. If God delivered you from crack cocaine, don't go back and find no pipe. If God delivered you from every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Mary, Sue, and Jane, don't go back to whoring around, but run for your life. And don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look back. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor he brought you out don't look back 
Many have left their destiny. Many, many have left their destiny. Amen. Because they have chosen to go back from where they were. But I want you to know that we are not leavers of destiny. We are followers of destiny. And I feel in my spirit right now that God has got a great work for us to do on this corner. But we've got to realize our destiny. We have to realize that we're not always individuals, but we are a collective body of believers. We must learn how to flow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We must learn how to flow as one, walk as one, and talk as one, live as one, and be as one. For one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 a flight. A threefold cord is not easily broken. But when we're here and when we're there and when we're there and when you think this and I think that, that makes the devil glad. But God wants us happy in one place and on one accord. Can I talk to you for a little while? When we get on one accord, Deacon Harrison, the Holy Ghost will fall. When we get on one accord, the Shekinah glory will hover over top and in this place. We will see signs and wonders. But when you come in here and you're ready to go and you're not willing to do what the psalmist says we need to do first and that is praise him in the sanctuary he said praise him first in the sanctuary not in the firmament of his power not for his excellent greatness not for his mighty power not on the symbols or the high sounding symbols not with the psaltery in the heart not everything that that having breath praising him but praise him in the sanctuary if you can lift up your hands here if you can shout hallelujah here if you can dance when you want to dance here then you might as well go ahead and throw in the towel because this is the place where the redeemed of the Lord can say so so why don't you now take a moment and throw your hands up and lift your hands up to your head back and say hallelujah we need to understand that we are one body we are the body of Christ the head cannot say the toe cannot say to the foot I don't need you the eye can't say to the ear I don't need you but we need one another it's been impressed upon our hearts to say all year long how we gotta love one another pray for one another feel for one another and help one another I got to move on but in our text we find that the fish are not biting amen the fish are not biting in our text on today they have been out there all night long and here comes a man that they do not know who he is and he asked them the question children do you have any meat and they answered him simply no we don't have anything i imagine that one may have said to another who is this guy somebody make him go away we've been here all night long and we're frustrated we're not only frustrated because we ain't got no fish but we're frustrated spiritually because we ain't been around jesus there is a longing and we can deal without not having fish but we cannot deal without the presence of our Jesus. Because once you have been in his presence, you have experienced pleasures of 
joy uh, when you have experienced his presence you know what it's like unlike any other person that has not experienced his presence it is wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord is there anybody in here today who has ever been in the presence of the Lord he says to them, uh, do you have any meat? They said, no. And he asked them a question. He says, cast your net. Or he says to them, cast the net on the right side of the ship. Now, this here is a, uh, this is something that they're not grasping. These are professional fishers. They have been up all night long fishing. They have caught nothing. And here this fellow is on the side of the sea telling them to cast their net on the right side. What is, after all night long, another five feet or ten feet going to do? If you're going to take it from here and put it over there, what difference is that going to make? Earlier, they had in the onset of their walk with the Lord, in Luke chapter number five, they had the same problem. They fished all night long, and Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Uh, Peter says, Lord, we have been out here all night. We have caught nothing. We put our nets up. And to keep our nets secure and safe and beyond being damaged because they're already recuperating from being in the salt water, to take them back out could damage them. Peter says, nevertheless, master, listen to here. He says, nevertheless, at thy word. It is at your word that I'm trusting in. It is at your word that I'm depending on. I am an expert fisherman, and I don't know who you really are as of right now I know you are a good teacher and I know that John says he's seen the Holy Ghost fall upon you as a dove and said this is my beloved son hear him but I don't know I've heard you teaching you've got an anointing unlike I've ever heard but I really really don't know who you are as a matter of fact he walked with him for two years before it was revealed to him that Jesus was the Christ the son of the living God and flesh and blood didn't reveal it to him but his father which was in heaven so after two days he is taking the word of Jesus he launches out into the deep and they catch a great number of fish ah but the fish were not biting and this is not Jesus that he thinks he's talking to and the man says launch it or take it another a to the right side throwing on the right side there is a lot of things that the scripture or John is trying to talk to us about here throwing on the right side would mean they would have to work counter to their culture culturally the right hand was the stronger amen so when they threw the net out they would throw it on the left so if there were any fish they could use their right hand to rake it in they had had it on the left all night and nothing happened but that's how they have been fishing all their life but now this stranger on the seashore is saying throw it on the right side somebody said he must not know really what's going on 
So they throw it on the right side against their culture, against what they're accustomed to. Amen. Throwing it on the left is going to make it easier to pull in. But if we get 10 or 20 and we put it on the right, it could be difficult to keep just five. And if seven of us here, you're making eight. How are we going to feed eight folk with five fish? Y'all ain't praying for me here. Now, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we're going to have to go against our culture. Uh, we're going to have to go against the grain. We're going to have to go sometimes against what folk may think about you. Amen. Because we're trying to save souls. If we turn into anything else than a soul saving station, I want no part of it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if this is not a soul saving station, I want no part. And I mean absolutely no part. But I want to be where that we can lift up our hands. I want to be where we can pray and fast and call on the name of the Lord and say, Lord, save my children and save my grandchildren. Save my aunts and my uncles and my cousins. Save those who are out in the streets, Lord. Save the alcoholics. Save those on fit and all. Save to the utmost. Somebody wrote a song and said, to the utmost, Jesus saves. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you might have to go against the grain, but you got a job to do. Well, it may be more difficult going against the culture, amen, but that's how we got to roll. We got to roll going against the culture. I'm almost finished now, amen. You got to understand that now Jesus has resurrected and uh, it has been three years. You got to understand before in the chapter of Luke, the fifth chapter, when they started following Jesus, the troubles were different, amen. When they they first threw the net out. They didn't have the troubles uh, when they launched down into the deep in Luke 5 that they have in uh, John 21. Uh, they had encountered some troubles, but it was not troubles with Jesus. Uh, if somebody was to uh, do something to one of them in Luke chapter 5, if someone smote them on the cheek, they would smite back in Luke 5. If somebody lied on them in Luke 5, amen, then they would smite them on the cheek. If somebody in Luke 5 would curse them, then they would curse them back. Can I talk to you? But something has happened between Luke 5 and John 21. I heard him say, oh, what a change has come into my life since Jesus. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Something has happened. They never had to deal with Pharisees prior to Luke 5. They never had to hear that if their neighbor, amen, curses you, love him back. Love them that despitefully use you and pray for them that hate you. That was prior to Luke 5. But, but since John 21 has come and they have seen the compassion passion that Jesus has had. They have seen people want to stone him to death. They have seen people point the finger at them and say he's eating with unclean hands. They've seen people come in the garden of Gethsemane, take their savior, put him on an old rugged cross and crucify him. They know he's got power to call down the legions of angels but not one mumbling word comes out of his mouth they then remember when he said if I be lifted from the earth I'll draw all men unto me y'all ain't praying in here well now they've got different troubles turn to your neighbor and say neighbor the trouble that I had 
before I walked with him are different now than the troubles I have since I've been walking with him. Well, I've got troubles. I had troubles then. Amen. But I don't have some of those troubles then that I have now. <gasps> troubles that I have now is trying to let everybody know that Jesus is real. I've been lied on and just because I was lied on didn't mean I could go and confront the individual. I've had to cry sometimes. I've been talked about sometimes, but I couldn't go get them a piece of my mind. I had to call on the name of the Lord. I had to cry and say, Lord, help me deal with him. Help me deal with her. Can I talk to you for about 10 more minutes? These Pharisees and Sadducees, they thinking, I never knew that they were this mean. They hate Jesus. I thought that they were our spiritual religious leaders, but they are mean individuals. Amen. These disciples have grown in three years they've seen a lot of things but even though they have seen all these things in three years a man they still return from whence they came from and I'm getting ready to close they came back to where they were they came back to Peter's business where he had those same nets that were broken in Luke 5 when he launched out into the deep and brought the nets back and left them there and started following Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, he left them there but came back to them. When he came back to those nets in John 21, he began to say, these nets are in bad shape. So he has to begin to make knots of them. He said, I'm going fishing. He has to tie those nets that were previously broken three years ago in order to fish in John 21. I think he was doing it more for relaxation just to clear his mind and to get his mind on the Lord. I believe he was doing some praying in the Sea of Tiberias uh, while he was out there. But the nets had to be repaired. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the nets have to be repaired. So he repaired the nets. When he repaired the nets, he threw them out, but he threw them on the wrong side. Amen. These nets that were once good for fishing, how in the world are they ever going to hold up now? When he throws them on the right side, I'm getting ready to close. But turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, throw your net on the right side. Now, it may not make a lot of sense to you. And I know it's against your culture. I know it's easier to keep it on the left side. But God said today, throw them on the difficult side. Don't throw them on your strong hand. Throw them on your weak hand. Throw them on the hand where it's going to be difficult to pull them in. I know, I know it's contrary to what you've always have done, but if you're going to change some things in life, you got to change some things in life. Turn to a neighbor before I take my seat and say to your neighbor, neighbor, it's going to be difficult, but you will adjust. 
heater then throws the net on the right side and all of a sudden there was a great bubbling on the right side of the ship fish were coming from everywhere fish were filling the net they look over at the man on the seashore and when John figures it out he says Peter it's the Lord the same way he brought me is the same way he's keeping me turn to somebody and say neighbor if the Lord saved you he's able to keep you if the Lord did delivered you he's able to keep you delivered if the Lord healed you he's able to keep you whole I don't know what you're complaining about in here today just because you had to move your net from one side to another but I've come by to let you know that at thy word anyway you bless me I'll be satisfied if you tell me to go east I'm going if you tell me to go south I'm going give your neighbor high five and say neighbor at his word yeah yeah clap your hands and give God praise they throw it on the right side and all of a sudden fish was coming out of everywhere uh, John says it's Jesus uh, Peter was naked fishing and he had to put on his clothes uh, amen he said I'm a sinner uh, he said Lord I'm not worthy uh, but that's all right uh, amen I want you to know uh, we've had troubles in our life uh, I want you to know uh, we've got tribulations uh, in our life uh, since I met Jesus uh, I've come from a long way can we go higher can we go deeper since I met him I've had trial tribulation anybody here had trial tribulation persecution hardship following Jesus but that's all right I said that's all right because as long as I got King Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. I said, ah, ah. I don't need nobody. He is my leaning post. He is my strong tower. He is my help. He is my strength. He is my peace my joy my hope he's every every <laughs> they mended the nets praise the lord I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to mend these nets. I'm trying to close, but look at somebody and say, neighbor, we ain't used these nets in three years. We ain't used these nets in a long time. They're dried up, but that's all right. We're going to tie them up. Yeah. We're going to throw them back in the water. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to be of a good courage. Wait on him. Wait on him. A harvest. I said a harvest is coming at the wild. And when the harvest comes, I will bless him at all times. When the harvest comes, I'll be glad, glad, so glad. When the harvest comes, I'll 
sing and shout hallelujah hallelujah when the harvest comes I'll have joy 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 clap your hands say neighbor it will work throw it on the right side mended nets will work say mended nets Paul said for which cause I also suffer these things but nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day I know in whom I believe I'm persuaded that which I've committed to him that he is able to keep that against that day. It's like having a $20 bill and you put it in the bank. You're committing this money into the hand of the banker. It's gonna draw a little bit of interest, not a whole lot, but a little bit. But then you take out another 20 and you drop it in. You commit it to the banker. It's gonna draw a little interest. Every day, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Paul says, I know what I have committed unto him, that he is able to keep that. He says, I'm persuaded that what I'm putting into Jesus, he's able to take it and make something more than what it is. If I keep it in long enough, it's going to turn into a hundred dollar bill. Paul said every day I'm going to keep on committing unto him. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to shout hallelujah. All night, all day, I'm going to bless him. And if anybody else want to get in, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on up here and commit yourself. Let everybody present your body a living sacrifice and after a while by and by when the morning come payday 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 look at your neighbor say neighbor payday is coming after a while I'm gonna walk the streets of gold Ah, go sing with the heavenly coast. I've been, I've been redeemed by his blood. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Clap your hands. Shout hallelujah. Oh, you only going to get in what you put in. You ain't getting a, a dime more. 
You want a log cabin in the corner? Then go ahead and get your log cabin in the corner. But I want, you know, having the kingdom of God is 1,500 miles east, west, north, and south. It's like a big cube. And it's 1,500 miles high. And there's different levels. They say that it would take 86 earths to fill the landmass of this new Jerusalem coming down. If every level was 20 feet, and excuse me, say that the ceilings were 20 feet high, and I don't know what's the ceiling, probably 10 feet. They say if there were 20 feet, and that's a pretty big room, that's a pretty big level. <clears throat> And I can't forget because the number was so large of how many rooms just on one level, talking about from here to Arizona, this way, that way, that way, that way, just 20 feet high, how many levels that would be. You can stay on the first floor if you want to. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can stay on the first floor if you want to. But I want... At least the 25,000th floor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody said every round goes higher and higher. You better put your praise on. You better get your praise in. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. All right. All right. I want to be saved. I ain't got time for being mad at nobody without a reason. You know, some folk can be mad at you for without a They don't have no reason. Amen. Some folk are mad at you. They don't have a reason. I've, I've heard people tell me the reason why I don't go to church is because of him. Because of who? Who's going to keep you out of church? How dare you say somebody going to keep you out of church because of him? The devil is a liar. Amen. Uh, but when we come to the house of the Lord, I'm finished. We ought to get into the service of the Lord. Amen. You got to be able to find something that excites you. Amen. Maybe we'll have one day we'll get a circus we'll get some elephants y'all ain't saying nothing in here maybe some monkeys to do some loops go through loops maybe that would excite some people amen i don't know what it's going to take but peter said at thy word at thy word he said thy word oh lord have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against you his word is enough for me. It's enough for me to lift up my hands every now and then and say thank you. Everybody lift your hands up. Everybody stand on your feet. You ought to be glad to be in the number one more time. Lift your hands and holler thank you. Come on, let's take about 60 seconds. Commit it under. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it, give it, give it. Give it to him. Give it to him. You ought not have to be pumped. You ought not have to be proud. You ought to come in here and give it to him. Yeah, give it to him. Yeah, give it to him. All night. Dance, dance, dance. All night. Dance, dance, dance. All night. All night. All night. All night. All night. Dance, dance, dance. All night. Dance, 
dance, dance, all night, all night, dance, dance, dance. All right, who wants to be healed? Who wants to be healed? Who wants to be healed? All right. Anybody else? Anybody else want to be healed?